Well, I should have known when Senator Klobuchar got involved, at least there'd be a touch of snow up here this morning. <laughs> of all the things we'd considered, I don't think snow was on my agenda until I walked out the door a moment ago. But thank you, Senator Klobuchar, and thanks to the other members of the Joint Congressional Committee on the inauguration as we officially begin the 59th inaugural ceremony. I also want to thank the Joint Committee staff and our partners, particularly our security partners, for the, they, the way they've dealt with unprecedented circumstances. When I chaired the inauguration four years ago, I shared President Reagan's 1981 description of this event as commonplace and miraculous. Commonplace because we've done it every four years since 1789, miraculous because we've done it every four years since 1789. Americans have celebrated this moment during war, during depression, and now during pandemic. Once again, all three branches of our government come together as the Constitution envisions. Once again, we renew our commitment to our determined democracy, forging a more perfect union. That theme for this inauguration, our determined democracy, forging a more perfect union, was announced by the Joint Committee before the election with the belief that the United States can only fulfill its promise and set an example for others if we are always working to be better than we have been. The Constitution established that determined democracy with its first three words, declaring the people as the source of the government. The Articles of Confederation hadn't done that. The Magna Carta hadn't done that. Only the Constitution says the government exists because the people are the source of the reason it exists. They immediately followed those first three words with the words to form a more perfect union. The founders did not say to form a perfect union. They did not claim that in our new country nothing would need to be improved. Fortunately, they understood that always working to be better would be the hallmark of a great democracy. The freedoms we have today, the nation we have today, is not here just because it happened, uh, and they aren't complete. A great democracy working through the successes and failures of our history, striving to be better than it had been. And we are more than we have been, and we are less than we hope to be. The assault on our capital at this very place just two weeks ago reminds us that a government designed to balance and check itself is both fragile and resilient. During the last year, the pandemic challenged our free and open society and called for extraordinary determination and sacrifice and still challenges us today. Meeting that challenge head on have been and are healthcare workers, scientists, first responders, essential frontline workers, and so many others we depend on in so many ways. Today we come to this moment, people all over the world as we're here are watching and will watch what we do here. Our government comes together, the Congress and the courts join the transition of executive responsibility. One political party more pleased today and on every inaugural day than the other. But this is not a moment of division, it's a moment of unification. A new administration begins and brings with it a new beginning. And with that, our great national debate goes forward and a determined democracy will continue to be essential in pursuit of a more perfect union and a better future for all Americans. What a privilege for me to join you today. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.